welcome to news highlights. My name is Obiageli Ugoke. President Muhammad Buhari has joined world leaders in expressing grief over the death of Brazilian soccer legend Edison Aranto Nascimento, known as Pele, who died on Thursday. In a tribute to the football legend who made a huge contribution to the development of sports on behalf of Nigerians, President Buhari said, May he rest in peace. He described late Pele as one who had spirit of generosity and humanity despite his greatness as a footballer. Being a UN ambassador of goodwill, the world will never forget him. And as the world continues to pay tribute to the late footballing legend Pele, who died at the age of 82, the Brazilian Football Federation has described him as much more than the greatest sports person of all time. Current and former players took to social media to pay their respect, with many describing him as the man who turned football into art and entertainment and gave a voice to the poor and the black people. Other world leaders have also sent their tributes. President of the United States, Joe Biden, and Brazilian president said, for a sport that brings the world together like no other, Perez's rise from humble beginnings to soccer legend is a story of what is possible. The late Brazilian footballer Pele won three World Cups, the first at 17 and the last as a tennis man in 1970, arguably the finest ever. He scored more than 1,200 career goals and is the protagonist of some of the most revered and replayed moments in football history. Away from that, mediators between Ethiopia's federal government and authorities in the Tigray region employed until last month in a brutal war are stepping up efforts to enforce a truce as relation between two sides inch closer towards normality. The November 2nd ceasefire quitting the two-year conflict that killed tens of thousands and displayed millions on the horn of Africa country, but implementation of part of the deal has been slower than hoped. Humanitarian workers in Tigray say troops from neighboring Eritrea, which should have withdrawn under the times of truce, are still present in several towns here, a region where millions remain hungry and needing aid. Eritrea's government has not commented. And that does it on this news update. Thanks for staying. I'm um, Obiageli Hukoke. They say if you want to know how many seconds we have before election day 2023, check the heartbeat of the candidates. If you want to know how many minutes are left till the day, then check the tweets of their followers to determine the hours left to monitor the dis just monitor the discussions among the electorate. And how about the days left? That one is on the mind of the security personnel. However, we still have just over a day left in 2022, and so we must look back before looking forward. What is 2022 leaving behind in the annals of Nigeria's political history? And how prepared are the key actors for the much heralded 2023 in the nation's political landscape? I am Fisayo Gunfi. Welcome to the very last edition of Political Update for the year 2022. 
He started uh, the year on a winning note and it looks to have ended it uh, in the same manner. As the governorship uh, election tribunal sitting in Adoik, it has dismissed the petition filed by the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Shegoni, against the election of Governor Abiodun Yebanji as winner of the June 18 governorship election in Ekiti State. The tribunal, headed by Justice Wilfred Pochi, ruled that the petition lacked merit and the petitioner failed to prove his petition beyond reasonable doubt. The Social Democratic Party candidate, Shegun Oni, through his counsel, Obafemi Adewale, S.A.N., avowed that the June 18, 2022 governorship election violated the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 and the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, with alleged cases of widespread vote buying and muzzling of opposition figures which affected the outcome of the election. Oni also described the primary that produced Oyebanji as candidate as being fraught with irregularities as the governor was not validly elected to fly the APC's flag. On this basis, the petitioner wanted the victory obtained in his favor, or alternatively, the SDP candidate sought the relief of the tribunal for outright nullification of the election and ordering of a rerun. The three-man tribunal headed by Justice Wilfred Bochi observed that the ground by the petitioner that the governor of Yobe State, May Malabuni, who conducted the APC primary, was an illegal occupant of the seat, and that all actions taken while to pretending over the party was illegal, null, and void. The tribunal held that it is not within its jurisdiction to entertain a pre-election matter. On these grounds, the tribunal dismissed the petition for lacking in merit. With all lengths, I think uh, it's a judgment that I think um, will be referred to constantly in the years to come. That is how the lower courts have seen the case. And that uh, I believe the Court of Appeal and will see it differently. Governor Biodo Oyebanji was declared the winner of the June 18 poll by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. <laughs> This week, the Senate and the House of Representatives passed the 2023 appropriation bill. Lawmakers have expressed optimism that the 2023 budget will sustain development processes put in place by the current administration. There are some views on the budget tact, the budget of fiscal sustainability and transition. The budget was passed by the two chambers with the expectations that it is designed to achieve macroeconomic stability, human capital development, food security, as well as improved external and internal security architecture. It gives room for stability of planning by those who depend on whatever happens in the budget and even the economy itself. Before we came in the the current was just about 20 to 25 percent before we had administration. We would have improved it about 35 40 percent. What I think the executive is trying to do is to see how best they can manage uh, the kind of battered economy we have. The legislators are also of the opinion that the budget is based on realistic understanding of the country's financial situation. Generally, the budget works on an envelope. You do a ratio that since security is priority, okay, let's take this more than a certain uh, sector of a budget, and then the other sectors are also classified based on their importance. That's what is available in, 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 in reality. Because looking at the books, you can't give what you don't have. And the best that they have is what they have given to Parliament to think, think through. And we have talked through it, placed things where they ought to be. The senators and House members are hoping that the 2023 budget will serve its purpose of ensuring security and economic stability in the country. Okay, in terms of budgeting, uh, that will be the last one for the Ninth Assembly. Uh, let me quickly welcome uh, Honorable Francis Wife, a representative Willie North, who is the Southern Udu Federal Constituency of Delta State. Reverend Honorable welcome again to political update and it's been a while almost about seven eight months we've seen you yeah and we give that praise thank you for having me again 
Uh, very, sh very, short, very shortly, uh, the tinted glass will come down. You come and see your constituents uh, in, a in a couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah. uh, right. and go back to so that they can mark your papers. But for for uh, this time, uh, you and your colleagues, this is the last time you'll be doing this uh, for the ninth assembly. Yeah. So, are you satisfied what with your interventions and uh, what you have served Nigeria with for 2023? Well, sure, I'm a proud member of the ninth assembly. Uh, the Ninth Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives, to which I belong, have done so much for Nigeria. This Ninth Assembly has restored the January-December uh, budget circle that makes for certainty in economic planning. Uh, this Ninth Assembly has given us the Electoral Act, which is uh, a legislation that is top-notch, uh, I mean, world class, something that can revolutionize uh, the electoral process and make it credible, uh, fair, and uh, believable, acceptable by everybody. Uh, this assembly has also given us the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, I can go on and on. The Police Reform Act. There's so many that we have done. Comparatively, the Ninth Assembly to me is the best in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. And then you were talking about my constituents marking me. Mm -hmm. Oh, the marking has been on from the first uh, day and I've passed. Oh, uh, we, we will know uh, in, uh, in February, uh, because you have the National Assembly and presidential elections, uh, that is when the result sheet will come. But uh, we will we, we take your word for it. Let's, uh, let's uh, go to, you know, some have said that, even in spite of this past mark you've given yourself, that. Yeah, uh, you and your colleagues may have even done much more, if not because of this, uh, you know, the uh, shadow in the political scene. Seems as if some of you had uh, your eye uh, on uh, returning and others, and there's not too many uh, robust, uh, you know, engagements uh, in the tail end of the year. Do you agree? Well, um, at the end of the legislative uh, session like this, everybody is uh, trying to get your ticket back, trying to get re-elected, you know. And if you're not careful, there's this shift from governance to politics. And that's what we're experiencing. But that notwithstanding, the uh, Ninth Assembly has ensured that governance does not suffer. At least you've seen that we passed the budget on time in December. It's now left for Mr. President to append his uh, signature so that we retain the January, December for 2023. So the, the, the National Assembly, members of the National Assembly have done very well and did not allow the politics to affect uh, governance. And uh, we deserve some kudos from Nigerians, you know. All right, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Of course, Nigerians are waiting with their pen, paper, and thumbs uh, to know uh, that direction. But uh, first of all, we will begin our review of 2022 with the activities of the ruling All Progressives Congress in the outgoing year. Within the year 2022 under review, the Governing All Progressives Congress reached its ninth year as a political party and seven years in power at the center. The outgoing year 2022, being a pre-election year in Nigeria, no doubt featured notable political events that added value and color to the country's democratic journey. In the camp of the progressive family, the APC, there was never a dull moment. In March 2022, the former Nasara state governor Abdullahi Adamu was affirmed as the consensus national chairman of the party during the 5th National Convention of the APC held in the nation's capital, Abuja. This ushered in a new national working committee and ended the supervision of the government Malabuni-led Kiatika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the party. The new leadership of the party immediately hit the ground running by embarking on the critical pre-election processes. The party fielded a deluge of interest in different political offices and the cost of its nomination and expression of interest form stocked a number of conversations. Nevertheless, this process ushered in the APC's primaries nationwide, including the presidential primary held on June 2022. The party's national leader and former Lagos state governor, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, emerged as the party's candidate after a keen contest, which included some party heavyweights, including the vice president, Yemi Oshibanjo, former minister of transportation, Rotimi Amechi and Senate President Ahmad Lawan. In other contests, the APC actively 
participated in the off circle governorship elections in Ikiti and Osho states. While APC retained power in Ikiti, it could not do the same in Osho state as it lost to the opposition People's Democratic Party. Back to the national political arena, the podiums are staunchly carrying the weight of the politicians as the 2023 Tinobu Shatima APC presidential campaign train has since reactivated strategies for physical interaction with prospective voters. As Nigeria gets set for the seventh round of general elections since the return of democracy in 1999, APC is on the ballot for the third time since its formation in 2013. In the People's Democratic Party PDP had an inevitable uh, presidential primary. The outcome also led to some equally interesting developments in 2022. The current National Working Committee of the PDP under the leadership of Senator Iyocha Ayu upon assuming office proposed to unify the party as well as lead it to victory in the 2023 general elections. We have come out stronger. We are united. We are determined to come back. We are PDP belong. One year on, analysts believe that the opposition party is still sharply divided ahead of next year's polls. Therefore, the plan to return the party to the people as well as reposition it to be able to win the 2023 polls still has some hurdles to scale. Some party leaders and members say the PDP's resolve to rescue and rebuild Nigeria started robustly following the presidential primary election that produced former Vice President Atiku Abubakar as the party's presidential candidate for the 2023 elections. Of course, there are some discomforting family issues in our party as of today. They are usual in a big family. We are determined to resolve those internal disagreements. The PDP chairman in a twist ran into troubled waters in June after the nomination of Delta State Governor Ifanyo Kowa as PDP vice presidential candidate. Prior to the nomination of Okoa as running mate to the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, the party had set up a high-powered committee to consult on suitable vice presidential candidate. The committee, which included representatives of the various organs of the PDP, had shortlisted the Delta Governor Ifani Okoa, Governors Newsom Wiki and Manuel Udom of Rivers and Aquaibom states respectively for the position. Ayo, while speaking at Okoa's unveiling, had dispelled media reports that the majority of members of the panel had voted in favor of Wiki as a preferred choice for the vice presidential ticket. However, the national chairman's comment did not go down well with supporters of the Rivers Governor, who insisted that the Rivers Governor had scored more votes in a poll done by the panel members. This has led to the polarization of the various organs of the party, including the National Working Committee, with Governors Wiki, Samuel Otom, Ifan Ugwani, Okezek Bazu, and Sheyima Kinde of Rivers, Benue, Enugu, Abia, and Oyo states, alongside other Griffs party leaders, demanding the hostile of the national chairman. Since the crisis broke out in June, neither Ayo nor the party has known peace. Contrary to all the speculations in the social media, the National Working Committee or the party didn't select one name for the candidates. On behalf of our group, that we are very, very delighted to have had this meeting, to have uh, exchanged views, to have reviewed matters, and we know that developments will unfold, and as they do, we shall honestly and properly brief the nation. The Wiki Group also called the G5, which has remained resolute in its demand for Ayo's replacement with a southerner ahead of the 2023 presidential poll, withdrew from the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, pending the sack of the national chairman. As part of efforts to ensure peace in the party, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Senator Wali Jibril, stepped down, paving the way for the board secretary, Senator Dolphus Wabara, from the southeast to assume the chairmanship of the board. The move was, however, not accepted by the wiki led aggrieved members. No matter what the anger is, let us debrief ourselves in-house rather than playing to the gallery. Meanwhile, efforts are ongoing to reconcile aggrieved members of the PDP going forward into the 2023 elections. 
Thank you, Timothy Yusuf, for the Chronicles uh, from the PDP in 2022. Um, uh, let's just look at uh, a few more other developments from other parties very quickly. The Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council has a new Director General. Uh, that is not news. However, Akin Oshutokun, who has done this before, says it is not just what you do, but how you do it. Oshintoku is taking over as the Director General of Obidati Presidential Campaign Council following the resignation of Donyo Kukbe. He is confident that P2B is the most qualified candidate for the presidency and promised to work hard to surmount challenges facing the campaign. For the young Nigerians championing the obedient movement, the DG is promising increased support. The future of Nigeria belongs to them. And we have chosen the candidate who best personifies that future. Yeah. And many of them are in the support groups. Yeah. Under my leadership, they are going to get the optimum, the maximum attention and respect that they deserve. Aki Oshintoku has previously served as Director General News Agency of Nigeria, political advisor to former President Olusegun Obasanjo, and Director of PDP Presidential Campaign in 2011. Thank you, Ekenandu. Everybody looks much older these days and grays everywhere. But let's uh, uh, quickly come back to Reverend uh, Wife before we go. You are in a uh, position, uh, talking the pol about the politics. Uh, aspect of it now you know you have to move from your green chamber to the grassroots chamber now ah <laughs> uh, yes in your state you are in a you know uh position uh your boss will say uh, it is a, an issue of the bed and the rope if the bed flat stops on the rope the rope is not comfortable the bed is not comfortable the, your governor is pdp you are apc yeah. uh you are all going uh to the polls and the governor has a, an even bigger ambition uh at the center yeah. what are the chances for you at least from your perspective especially in uh really not south and they will do as well of course uh, for my own election is a walkover I, I had the privilege of writing my own history. The pen was not in somebody else's hand. My performance on the floor, my performance in the constituency in terms of uh, relating with the people on grad, grassroots, infrastructure, it beats everything since 1999. So if you go there, you find that the election is going to be a walkover for me. And then for our party, the APC in Delta, I can tell you, you can write this down. Today, I'm the only APC rep from Delta. But after the elections, will be a minimum of six. And of the three Senate seats, we'll get a minimum of two. And of course, the governorship we've taken already. You can see what's happening even in before other. we even before we vote. Well, anyway, yes. let's uh, distinguish let's... Senator of your mark against a candidate that you can't beat that. Check the other candidates, and you know that it's between him and the others. So APC have taken over Delta, and we just can't wait. We are all excited waiting. Follow the news, what's happening in Delta every day. Every day there's a new development towards its direction. Even this morning, people are moving from the other party. I mean big fish, big features are moving. So <laughs> Boy, when you, when, we, when you talk of big fishes, we are in the delta full of a lot of rivers. <laughs> but uh, let's quickly, before we end it, you, 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 your state uh, was one of the first places where we tested the beavers. Yeah. Uh, if I remember, at the state uh, assembly election, the first time they were trying to do something before we now went to the state level. Uh, okay. uh, you you use the word uh, tested. Uh, yes, yes, tested. So tested. Yes. So now, uh, but now it's it's uh, you know what well, that's how we're going this time it's a game changer as well as so you know the backing of the electoral act as well and several tweaks and all that are you excited going to do this election since you are also on the ballot like i said at the opening uh we can only to know how the thing is going towards election day we only need to check your heartbeat so are you confident or are you in some form of privilege <laughs> you know my brother people like me who have vote votes we, we come into politics with votes already there are people who vote for us, come green, come shine, because of our integrity, our credibility, because of what we have done in the past, uh, what we stand for. So we have votes. So people have, like us are excited about Divas. 
excited about the Electoral Act. Votes are going to count this time. And our people are also excited. We're looking forward to an election that will be free, fair, and credible. So 2023 is going to be watershed in the history of our country as far as the electoral process is concerned. Let's go to the election management body. We end with the words of INEC National Commissioner on Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, who says, although the commission has the capacity to conduct a seamless exercise, incessant attacks are a threat to the process. <laughs> The commission is preparing and preparing well for the 2023 general election. Uh, we've recorded some reverses in some of the states of the federation in relation to attacks uh, in some of our facilities, uh, leading to the destruction of ballot boxes, uh, ballot um, uh, voting cubicles, and uh, permanent voters' cars. We have the capacity to recover from these attacks. From Since the 2019 general election up to 2022, we've recorded uh, 50 attacks in 15 states of the federation. But the ones we recorded in 2022 are the ones that we consider as systematic and coordinated. And these are the ones that are targeted <coughs> at um, uh, uh, derailing the preparations of the Commission uh, from conducting free, fair, credible and transparent election. In our Abiyokuta South uh, local government office um, um, in Ogu State, we recorded so much losses. We have moved to a, a new location. Uh, in uh, Izi, we are moving to a, a in EZ, in uh, Bonny, we are moving to a new location. So all these attacks that have taken place, we have the capacity to recover, and we are going to recover uh, because we are already uh, reprinting the permanent voters' cars that were lost during the inferno, and we are also replacing the voting cubicles and uh, ballot boxes that we are also lost, and also trying to rent offices for the ones that we cannot uh, repair. But that is it. But if these attacks go into January and February. It may be difficult for us to recover from those attacks. Uh, this is because if you look at Section 134 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, it has threshold that a candidate must meet before that candidate can be declared as the winner of any election. Uh, so we do not want these attacks uh, to continue. We don't want them to persist. Uh, but we have the assurance uh, from the various security agencies that they are going to dominate the environment, they are going to neutralize uh, um, all some of these uh, attacks um, we, are, we, are, we are having and that it will not continue. And that is the assurance we have from them. We need a secure environment. We need a safe environment uh, to conduct the 2023 general election. The Nigerian people want a good election. The Nigerian people People want to embrace democracy and have embraced democracy. The Nigerian people want an election that is driven by technology and we are going to conduct an election driven by technology. The Nigerian people want a winner, a credible winner to be declared for the 2023 general election. We are going to declare only those who the Nigerian people elect as the winners of, 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 of the election. So we do not want any distraction at this point in time and that is why we have made it very clear to the national assembly that all INEC offices shall and must be declared as high priority areas that needs adequate protection and needs adequate safety the nigerian people deserve to go into the election uh, with a clear conscience and with a clear mind we don't want people to go into the election with fear and anxiety uh, because that will not make for a credible election but in terms of our own preparations in terms of delivering on our mandate of organizing undertaking and supervising election we are on top of the situation and we are not going to disappoint the nigerian people thank you very much reverend wife for being a part of the program that is it for this year thank you so much for coming i wish you the very best in your end of us and that has been political updates for this year 2022 well, thank you for your steadfast patronage and commitment now that we are in the home straight with the election tape in sight we must play our role our with our thumbs not our fists our conscience not our appetite with our collective future not our individual fortunes as our primary consideration until next year when we hope to see you again i'm fisa Ogunfui, urging you to play your politics for the greater good bye for now
24 hours a day, 7 days a week.